from geometric stability theory to tame geometry, which is the concluding activity of the field's thematic program on pure and applied model theory. Now, ordinarily, one of the directors of the Institute would be here to uh, welcome us all, but uh, they're all busy at the, the moment. And Deirdre tells me that she'll probably come by tomorrow or the next day to formally welcome us all to the meeting. Uh, but they've asked me to repeat some of what they would have ordinarily said, uh, at least as far as the acknowledgements go. So that being the case, I'm just going to read to you what it is that they would have said in regards to acknowledgements. So you probably know that the Fields Institute for the Research in the Mathematical Sciences is located in Toronto, Canada, even though most of us are somewhere else in the world at the moment. Its mission is to, is to promote fundamental to, to promote research and fundamental and applied research in the mathematical sciences understood in the broadest sense. It does this by bringing people together to, to facilitate the communication and collaboration that sparks new ideas. It may be that you do not know the Fields Institute itself is on the traditional lands of the Huron Wadnot, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississauga of the Credit River. The Institute acknowledges and expresses gratitude for the opportunity to live and work on that land. The Fields Institute is funded primarily by the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada and the Ministry of Colleges and Universities, the province of Ontario, as well as a network of nine principal sponsoring universities and other sources. Now let's, maybe after that acknowledgement, I'm going to return to the point of this workshop. So I'm speaking to you as a member of the organizing committee and this conference had originally been planned to be held in Lumini uh, to, in June of 2020 to celebrate or it's a commemoration of Udi Ryshovsky's 60th birthday. Now, our organizing committee consists of seven people. Now, there are two of us who had the good fortune to be Udi's students, uh, myself and Asaf Hassan. And there are five other members. Uh, another one who we worked with Udi as a student, although it wasn't formerly a student, that would be Sylvain Rideau, and four of the people who are good friends and collaborators of Udi's, uh, Elizabeth Buscaran, uh, Antoine Ducrot, Frank Wagner, and Duke McPherson. And we've been planning this meeting for some years now, again, in the intent, with the intention of, of commemorating Udi's 60th birthday. Now, having, by tradition, we would have commemorations of, of a person's 60th birthday, in part because I, I suppose we'd, we'd consider this would be the point when, to look back and have a retrospective on the work that they've done. Uh, already here at the Fields Institutes, we've seen commemorations of the birthdays of 70th birthday of Anne Pillay and the 80th birthday of Angus McIntyre. So we know that the kind of work that a person can do and will continue to do and influence the fields goes well beyond that landmark of 60th birthday. So we're hoping that at some point in the future, whether it be five years or 10 years, we'll reconvene for a proper celebration where we can all be together to celebrate what the duties done. Now in preparing or in proposing this meeting for the first time to Serum, we had suggested that there's really no need to especially call it a meeting in the honor of Udia's 60th birthday, because any meeting that we would hold on model theory would almost by itself be a reflection of his work and his influence. Now, I know that uh, Udi would probably object somewhat with some of his uh, characteristic generosity, that it's not just his influence and his ideas which have made our subject what it is. And that's, that's true. There are many people who have been, a great many people have been involved with their ideas and insights and their hard work to make Model 3 what it is today. But it's still the case that if you look at the way that we practice model theory today, what we understand it to mean, and the way that we see mathematics is influenced in a very strong degree by the work that Zudi has done. Now, this is not just with regards to the technical results that he's proven, although it has a lot to do with that, but to a great degree to his perspective as to what it means to do mathematical logic, what it means to do, what it means to do mathematics. And of course, the technical results are important. 
Um, I'm going to be speaking tomorrow in my seminar about the group, conf group configuration theorem. There are many of us who continue to use the insights that are come around what has come to be called the Rashovsky construction to find counterexamples, say to the conjecture of Zilber on strong liminal, strong liminal theories, but in, great, in a great many other contexts. Maybe just as an aside there, I'll point out that I think that this is a nice instance where insights that were gleaned from other parts of logic, in this case, insights that were gleaned by thinking in terms of in almost recursion theoretic terms made it possible to solve problems in model theory. And many other sort of technical results that Udi's, that Udi's had continue to reverberate throughout what we do, what we do in the mathematics. But like I was saying, I think that to an even greater extent, it has to do with sort of his perspective on what we on what it means to do model theory, what it means to do mathematical logic, which has really changed how we how we study this subject. So it's I don't actually remember who it was that's he um, that he attributed this to. So I know that Udi's said this to me on more than one occasion, that he's heard from other serious practitioners in mathematics that when asked, what is, it, what is the subject that you study? What is your specialty? Rather than to say some particular area that I'm an analyst or I'm an algebraist or in our case, we might say that, we, that we're model theorists, to say that we practice mathematics and that there's no part of mathematics which is, which is alien. And this way of thinking about what it is that we do when we study model theory has opened up the entire field of mathematics to sort of the insights and the approach that, that, we, that, that we might have by thinking in terms of definability or in terms of other kinds of notions. So just as an example of one of these uh, kinds, of, kinds of approaches, an approach which not only sees all of mathematics as the rightful domain of model theory, but also rejects the, uh, rejects sort of the purity of method approach that's, that was intended previously in the study of mathematical logics is in the work, say, on definable types. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that we'll hear a, a bit about this a bit later, but definable types were originally studied in the context, say, piano arithmetic, but they reached their apogee in the study of stability theory. And it would seem that that's where they belonged that they really belong is just something that you study when you're doing stability theory. Um, but lo and behold, you can apply them to understand what happens say in the very unstable theory of algebra with valued fields where there's an order around. And with that order, you would think that that's it. It's impossible for this theory of definable types to tell you anything interesting, but it does to the point where you can understand imaginaries, you can understand from a model theoretic point of view what, the, uh, what a Berkovich space looks like. Now there's of course much more that I, I could and probably should be saying about Udi's work. Uh, Dave Marker is going to speak later this week in much greater detail about the technical aspects and also about ramifications of how Udi's work has gone. But this is the time now for us to return to actually doing mathematics and in celebrating by exposing what it is that we've, that we've all learned. And so I'm going to end sort of my, my, my little encomium here uh, and return to the, to, the, to the topic at hand where we're, where we're going to hear shortly from Francois Luzer. Uh, before doing that, maybe I should just mention just a, a few general housekeeping measures about this, about this conference. Um, again, most of us, are coming from somewhere else to attend this meeting. I mean, coming from in the sense that we're sitting in a room thousands of miles away from the Fields Institutes. There are some of some of you who are lucky enough to be present there in the uh, there in the institute. But again, for most of us, um, we're much further away. Uh, we would ask that if you are planning to ask a question during the lecture that you uh, make a point of turning your camera back on so that the speaker can see who you are and can interact with you as a human being, if only as a human being 
at a distance. There's more than just sound, but there'll also some sight. Uh, after the, between the lectures, uh, we'll have open a room on this platform called Wonder Me. Uh, you should have received a, a link from Brian Eel Arts earlier today. I'll place that link back in the chat. So that's between the lectures, we can go there and have some kind of, uh, have some kind of discussion. You'll find that, that there are two areas, one marked coffee, another one marked the last talk. Uh, those don't really have any functional meaning other than that they should somehow divide up the space as a place, one place where if you want to have uh, a mathematical discussion about what we, what we just heard in the most recent, most recent lecture, you might go to interrogate the speaker or to talk with some of our colleagues. And if you just would like to have a bit of a social interaction and a space called Mark Coffee would be a good place for that. I'm sorry, there will be no actual coffee provided. You have to provide that yourself. All right, so with the housekeeping in place, uh, and with the basic introductions in place, I'd like to take this opportunity now to introduce our first speaker, Francois Luzer, who will be speaking to us about integrating on stacks. Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, I need to share my screen. Okay, um, so it's a big honor to have the privilege to to give the first talk, of course, and uh, I, uh, I would like to express my gratitude to Udi for uh, all the collaborations and the great discussions we had uh, during all these years and. I'm sure uh, this will uh, go on for many years to come. So, uh, um, since I, I would like to discuss quite informally, since if I understand well, I have only 45 minutes. Uh, what is, uh, it means to integrate on algebraic stacks. Uh, I, I, sh I should nevertheless uh, uh, recall or explain uh, very uh, briefly what they are, in fact. Okay. So uh, informally, uh, stacks are essentially uh, sheaves of groupoid. So I put quotation marks because uh, uh, one has to give a precise meaning to being a sheaf of groupoids because groupoids are not set, they are categories, so it's a bit more complicated. But basically, that's the idea. And uh, we will uh, be uh, concerned with uh, algebraic stacks, uh, which are uh, sheaves of groupoids. say on the category of schemes. And what I want to really point out, if it's very important, it's, it's not for the Zareski topology, it's for another topology, for instance, for the Etal topology, we need more open. And of course, there are some conditions. Uh, what I will present is the key example, which is in fact, uh, we won't see other kind of stacks during this lecture. So uh, we take uh, G, a uh, uh, group scheme, a group algebraic group.
on a smooth on a scheme X. And uh, we also say to that uh, a stack which is denoted by X mod G between brackets. And I will describe its T points. for T uh, any scheme. So it will be a group OID. Whose objects are certain pairs. with uh, P. So P leaves over T, so we have, it will be uh, G cross T. And here, this is important, torsor, etal torsor over T. And pi is just uh, equivalent map from P to X cross T. So imagine there is no T. So you uh, take the categories of uh, G torsors and uh, with a, ma a morphism, a human morphism from the G torsor to X. Okay, so it's essentially a, an orbit. Okay. So, uh, that are the, th these are the points, and so I will take the example of a field, the po points of a field. Okay, and uh, if uh, say uh, P is a, a G tensor, we can uh, twist P X. Uh, Remember that X is endowed with the G action. So I can twist uh, the G action by, by the torso and get another form of X. And also I can twist the group itself by taking the automorphism of the torso. Then the points are in this in the field uh, F. They have a very uh, precise description, a very uh, uh, concrete description. I want to say. So it's a disjoint union of other isomorphism classes of torsors P. And uh, you mod out the twisted forms. There is a GP action on XP, and you take uh, the quotients of the rational points by the rational points of the group. So you see, uh, you have more information ju than just given by the looking at the quotient because you have to consider all the twisted forms. Okay, so that's uh, that's what I want to say about uh, algebraic stacks. And now I want to explain uh, the connection with uh, integration. So I will take- Actually, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, can I stop you just? Just to go yeah, a bit please. more slowly with this. So on the, in the definition of X over G of F, there's no P on the left-hand side. Oh, you say, I see, now I see it. So you have this, the disjoint union over all P. Yeah, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay, thanks. 
And I, I have to add something, uh, just uh, there are two important cases. So one case is when if G is finite, the stack is called a Dolimum for stack. In fact, uh, you could have a G not finite and the, the stack could also could still be a Dolimum for stack. But if it's finite, then it is a Dolimum for stack. And in general, we talk of Artin stack. Okay, so the, just the slogan is, uh, which is only partially true, is that the minimum for stack correspond to finite, to question by finite groups and Artin stack by, uh, to question by higher dimensional groups. So uh, for the first example, we, we, we keep uh, with the, the minimum for stack. So we, we take the simplest case. I mean, we take G a subgroup of SLNC, finite, of order say D. And uh, we consider uh, the quotient of Cn by G. So it can be defined as a spectrum of the invariant polynomial of the ring of invariant polynomial, for instance. And uh, we can consider on Cn uh, the canonical uh, gauge form, the x1, which is the xn. It's G invariant, so it descends to a form omega x on, on x. X may have singularities. Uh, in general, it has singularities, but uh, there is still a notion of differential form, and we can descend omega. Okay. And uh, uh, we have the following uh, result, which is close to 20 years old now, uh, which uh, was obtained with Yann Denev. If uh, I integrate uh, this form over the arc space of the quotient, this means I consider only the arcs with origin at zero. It uh, can be expressed as a sum over the conjugacy classes. of some uh, powers of L. L is the class of the affine line. So when you evaluate it on finite fields, you get Q. So uh, it's uh, striking because on the left hand side, you, you work on, you integrate on the quotient. And uh, you have uh, in a natural way, I will try to explain it right now, uh, the set of conjugacy classes that show up there. Okay, so let me uh, first uh, explain what is W, even so it's not so important, but... So uh, I will uh, fix a primitive root of unity, so of order D, D is the order of the group. Okay, so uh, gamma is, can be realized as, a, as an endomorphism of, of a CN, so it has some eigenvalues. It's of finite order, so. So the eigenvalues, it's eigenvalues are powers of psi. And uh, W is just uh, uh, 
the sum of these eigenvalues divided by d. So this is, uh, this is how it looks. Now I will explain geometrically. Uh, I will uh, explain uh, uh, ge ge uh, geometrically why the conjugacy classes uh, shows up. Okay. So in fact, we can decompose uh, the set of arcs on X. So uh, this is nothing else than uh, the CT point. Uh, Fonsa, I'm going to try to slow you down once again. Yeah, yeah please, please. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So W is basically the trace, the normalized trace, right? Of gamma. Uh, Sum of eigenvalues, so you can just, no? Oh, it's the, open, it's the exponents of the eigenvalues, so it's not exactly the trace. Ah, I'm sorry, it's the exponent, I see, so it's this exponent. Okay, and the other question is, what about the one, oh, I see. And this one over D, so is there L to the one over D? No, because this W is, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, of course, you're asking uh, the right question. The point is that this W is, uh, is integral. It's an integer because I, I, uh, I, I assume that G is a subgroup of SLN. Okay. If I would have taken, which is more natural, uh, any subgroup of GLN, then the Ws would be a rational number. They would not be integers in general. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. So uh, we have a decomposition like this. So uh, we are considering arcs on, on the Gaussian uh, variety uh, with uh, origin uh, zero. So uh, in fact, uh, we are constanting by, by finite order uh, information. So there is a discriminant. And uh, so delta here stands for the discriminant. And so these are just acts completely contained in the discriminant. But the discriminant has, of course, has co-dimension one. So from a major theoretic point of view, uh, this has volume zero. So this, uh, we should not be, uh, we don't have to take care of this part. And uh, now I will have to, I will explain uh, the other part. Okay, so take so an arc which is not fully contained in the discriminant. So not being fully contained in the discriminant means that the generic point of the arc is outside the discriminant. So we can lift uh, the generic point to CN. And since uh, the projection from CN to the Gaussian map is proper, we can lift phi tilde, phi to a phi tilde, I'm sorry. I'm, going to be writing too fast. But uh, we can do this. Uh, to do this, we have to ramify uh, the arc. So 
we will not, it will not be any more uh, a priori power series in T, but it will be power series of uh, the this root of T. So uh, the arc phi can be lifted uh, to a fractional arc phi, uh, phi tilde. And uh, we can, we have an action of roots of unity on uh, T. And uh, so maybe it's not very legible. And so this, uh, when I replace uh, the root of T by C, C times this root, okay, I, I, I guess someone in the same orbit for some element gamma. Okay, gamma is maybe not well defined, but its conjugacy class is well defined. And so uh, this explains, uh, I hope, uh, the decomposition, because uh, you have the arcs entirely contained in the discriminant, okay, they don't count. And the, for the others, uh, we can assign them a unique uh, conjugacy class gamma. And so uh, the proof of the theorem uses that decomposition. Okay, that's the basic, basic idea. And uh, more generally, uh, this can be globalized. Uh, you, if you take V smooth, uh, G uh, acting on V, maybe uh, effectively, uh, it's better, plus uh, some uh, Technical condition, I, I won't. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, this measure is also called the orbifold measure. So I, I denote it by mu index orb. And on any uh, quotient, I can uh, consider similarly a me measure mu orb. And we have a similar uh, decomposition over the conjugacy classes. The, uh, so for each uh, gamma, we consider the fixed point set. So this is the fixed point set. Okay, and uh, we mod out uh, V gamma I, so uh, so let me explain uh, uh, quickly this formula. So. Uh, so assume, for, assume the, that V gamma is connected, then there is, only, there is no I, and so we consider the quotient of V gamma by uh, its uh, uh, stabilizer and the corresponding class in the quaternary group. And uh, here we will have W gamma, which is defined in the same way, except that there are many points in the, on, the, on V gamma, but uh, V gamma is locally constant. And so it's constant on a connected component. And okay, when, it's, when the V gamma is not connected, uh, it goes the same way, component by component. Okay, so uh, this is it, but uh, we, we don't see any stack uh, around. And uh, in fact, this was reinterpreted by uh, Yasuda uh, in terms of tax. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, so 
let me call a twisted ax, this functional ax. They correspond to morphism of tax. So I can so take a functional power series. There is an action of, of these roots of unity on, the, on them, so we can uh, mod out and get a stack to the stack. So uh, this formula we, we had proved with uh, Jan. I mean, uh, at the time we did not know at all uh, anything about stacks, but uh, we, we were in fact like Monsieur Jourdain. So uh, we were uh, working on stacks without knowing uh, what they are. So uh, okay. Uh, now I just want to mention briefly some applications, recent applications. So uh, we start from a curve, uh, which is a smooth, complete projective. And We can consider a stable uh, and uh, the same thing for another group PGLM. So I won't uh, explain what are uh, Higgs bundle and so on. This is not important. What is important is that SLN and PGLN are dual groups. So there is some duality. And uh, so this gives rise to uh, a stack that we, I will denote by MSLN and uh, here for the dual group, PGLN. So there are dual groups. And so uh, uh, this led uh, to a conjecture by uh, Hosel and Sadius of uh, in, this, in the mirror symmetry way, which I will write a formula uh, in a few minutes. So uh, the key is the, what I want to, to just say using uh, two, With Dimitri Vis, we proved that if we integrate on the arc space of the first guy for the first group, there is the natural measure, which I don't want to explain. And if we integrate on the, on the object for the dual group, okay. So this is the formula I want to to to, to explain. So. On the left-hand side, uh, we have a 
so to speak, uh, a standard measure because this guy is smooth. Uh, but uh, here, uh, the other guy here is a question. It, has, it is not smooth and it has really a singularity. So we have to consider uh, the orbital, uh, the orbital uh, uh, orbifold measure. And uh, we also have uh, some, this is alpha is a character. Expressing the duality between the, the two groups in some sense. Okay, uh, I don't want to, to, to say uh, much more because the time is, is a bit short, but as a consequence, we have that the virtual motif of the first guy is equal to the virtual motif Or the second guy, but decorated in, the, in, in, in two ways. Uh, this stands for OB4, so there is some, we have to, to change uh, the, the, the motive to in terms of uh, what we have seen in this uh, right-hand side here. And we have to twist uh, with, uh, with characters. And this twisting is just, is uh, like replacing counting points of a final feed by uh, considering character sums. Okay, it's uh, this kind of twisting. And uh, for, uh, so one gets the consequence a statement for Hodge number. Due to uh, Groschenig, this and Ziegler. And they were using periodic integration. So our proof is following the same patterns as their proof. Instead, uh, we use motivic integration. And uh, the same three uh, young mathematicians, so provided a, a, a new proof of uh, goes fundamental lemma. by a similar method. As always, as often, uh, the point is that uh, when you use integration, you can uh, discard uh, uh, sets of measure zero. And uh, this is used in, uh, in a very uh, smart way. Uh, to throw away the parts uh, where you don't understand much the geometry and to reduce to, 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 to parts where you understand the geometry. Okay, this is very, uh, very, very summarized, but uh, I don't think I can do much more. So now I, I want to uh, ask uh, some questions maybe or to, Uh, so as uh, many uh, of you uh, are aware, uh, uh, Udi and Kashdan, uh, 
developed a geometric version of motivic integration uh, uh, based on understanding uh, Gothendic uh, rings of uh, definable sets. So comparing uh, the valued field sort and the RV sort. And so it would be, uh, it's natural to, to ask whether this can be done for stacks. So let's consider only Dolimum for stacks. So, so to speak, uh, action by final groups. So uh, such a Gothendic uh, group was first uh, introduced by Ekedal. Uh, something which I will uh, write like this. So DM stands for uh, Dolly Mumford, and I will uh, put uh, an X as an exponent and K for some, some base field. So uh, the point is that uh, it looks a nice definition. I, I won't give it because it may, it's certainly interesting for many purposes, but for what we want, it's not good because uh, it showed it is a localization of the gotten ring of varieties of a K. So yeah, just to invert a few uh, elements and uh, you get uh, so you get uh, the Gothenic ring of, uh, of the Dunyman for stacks in this sense. So this means that for Ekedal, uh, you don't get more information working with stacks. Uh, in, uh, uh, particular, if you take uh, yes, I'm using a notation which I did not introduce, so let me. So uh, if you let mu n act on the point, trivially, and you consider the corresponding uh, stack, uh, its class is one, and uh, this is uh, this is not what we want because this means that we we we, we will lose uh, uh, all the obvious structures that showed up uh, in uh, the statements I, I explained, which is not. Uh, uh, which is not. Uh, okay. Uh, fortunately, another definition was uh, given uh, more recently, which seems uh, good by uh, Berg. Berg gave a definition And so uh, I will give uh, there is a I will be the I will give the concrete description. It's not a definition. It shows that. Uh, so the definition I will not write it. I will just uh, explain by word. The, by, the definition is formally the same as the Gothenic ring of varieties. So you have a notion of a, of a closed substack of a stack. So the minimum for stack and. Uh, the key, uh, the key uh, relation is that the class of the of a, of a, of a minimum for stack is uh, equal to the sum of the classes of closed substack and its complement. Of course, the whole subtlety is hidden in uh, the definition of a closed uh, substack. Okay, and concretely, it's uh, it looks quite nice.
So you have uh, symbols uh, like this. So X uh, variety over which uh, finite constant group act uh, properly. And uh, it'd be a fine, and okay. And uh, so you take, of course, you consider only isomorphism classes and the relations. I mean, you first have uh, the additivity relation. So here, Z is a G invariant uh, closed uh, subset. And uh, you have another relation, which is, uh, uh, which allows to, to switch between different groups. So uh, here it is. Okay, so uh, if uh, X is as a G uh, cross H action, uh, so that the G action is free. Okay. And uh, so this is uh, these are the relations, and you have a product if you have uh, x with g action and y with h action, their product is a product with a product action. So this is uh, this looks quite good. And uh, it seems uh, quite likely that uh, one uh, should be able to to develop uh, uh, Udi Kashdan. Uh, Uh, integration in this setting. Hey, Francois, can I ask a quick question here? Yes, of course. Okay, I think you said X was a variety, right? Yes. I find so what is X? So X mod G, okay, and which one is so X? Mod just G? The, the, the cushion, I mean, uh, the, the invariant. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's the more, uh, more, uh, uh, and, and, it, even, and the, the action, the G action is supposed to be free for, for, for you to. Yeah, okay. Because okay, it's not, uh, of course, the key is that uh, if uh, G acts uh, with fixed point on X, uh, you don't want to identify uh, X to the power G with a class of the quotient. This, this would just kill uh, what you are, part of the interesting uh, information, but, if the action is free, you don't have uh, an interesting uh, more. You don't have anything uh, more than the quotient to, to look at. So, so this is uh, the the reason why you can uh, ask for this relation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. Uh, at least. Uh, Partially, and Arthur Corey uh, has some results. I mean, it's not clear that, I mean, in, in uh, the result by Udi and Kajdan, you, 
uh, as the more difficult part is to identify the kernel of some map. And it's, it's not clear how to do this uh, in an equivalent setting, but uh, the other part of the construction, they, it seems that they, they can, uh, they can uh, carry, we can carry them. In the case okay. that X is a point, yes. uh, do, these do these relations imply anything about XG? Uh, if you have only points, you 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 have you, you just keep G. Uh... So you're yeah, and there are no relations. I mean, just uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but if you look at dimension zero guys, then you have more because you you have orbits and so on. Yeah, but it seems to reduce to the case of point G. Okay, I don't know. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, the, the zero dimension case looks. Uh, uh, quite uh, quite quite easy to understand. Yes, and and very basic. I mean, uh. um, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, going back to that relation you had, it's I think it's slightly off the screen now. I was I'm just wondering. Um, uh, would would it, it does it follow if if instead of having the direct product, if you have a a, an, a group that that it does make as an extension of H by G. And so then you replace the G mod H by that, by that extension. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems that it would be natural to impose the same relation, but maybe is it already a consequence or? Uh, yeah, uh, I cannot uh, answer this question uh, on the spot. But as, as I mentioned, I mean, this is a, a spelled out uh, construction of this uh, ring, but. Uh, in fact, uh, they show that it corresponds to something more very conceptual, just the same as a Grotendieck ring of varieties, but uh, taking the additivity relation for closed substacks. Okay, now, uh, okay, I have uh, not so much time, uh, very few, very little time. Uh, so I wanted to say a few things about arting stacks. So uh, there is a motivation. I mean, uh, orbital integrals are, are, are in fact, uh, it's clear now that they are uh, naturally uh, best understood in terms of uh, stacks. I mean, it was first, uh, it started with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Joseph Bernstein and this was, uh, shows up in work uh, of Sacularides, for instance. There is no description of uh, the Cotonic ring of art in stack uh, similar to Baird's. And uh, there is some uh, recent work by uh, Satriano and Usatin Uh, they conjecture, I, I'm finished in one minute. They conjecture uh, So a uh, uh, key to uh, motivating integration and periodic integration uh, in the early stages was uh, so-called uh, a change of variable formula involving the Jacobian. And uh, they show that uh, uh, they conjecture a change of variable formula, but something new appears, which is interesting. Which involves not only uh, the order of the Jacobian, But also, one should take in account uh, non uh, separateness, deadness uh, phenomena, 
uh, is it specific to us to our thing stuff so they occur already for the case of the plane uh, divided with a gm action with weights one minus one so this just means that uh, gm acts by uh, so say lambda is the coordinate on gm it acts on multiplication by lambda on the first uh, on the first coordinate and by multiplication by lambda inverse on the second one and so such a stack already uh, shows some uh, non separateness pro properties and uh, even to have a change of variable formula for such a stack, you have to 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 introduce some new uh, invariants. Okay, so I think it's time for me to to stop. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, maybe we have uh, some time for some questions. Uh, and again, if you would like to just. Uh, Turn your camera on and ask a question. Go ahead. Um, do you have, is there any more general class than these Higgs bundles in which interchanging dual groups should lead, should give some formula for the, should, should give some identity? Yes, yeah, there are some, uh, so for, in some sense, it's also, it's, it's a bit different, but 